Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. For 10 more minutes, prime time, action field, drama free. Thunder Chief building action. Okay, people, we got old dad and the computer there. Dad and the Paul and dad. <laughs> played out of the computer in the house. I got these all ready to prime. And uh, hey, we was waiting for our mold release to dry. So we had to run to the flying field and check out the foamy. Hey, I tell you what, people, that five cell battery, that plane woke up. Flew awesome. Everything's still fine, you know. Hey, let's clear this up right now. I am not <laughs> guaranteeing that that won't fry anything, a five cell battery. But that's why I want to try it first. You know, if you try that, you're on your own. You can't take it back. Well, Bob said it was okay. You're on your own. <laughs> but worst case scenario, you know, you burned up a speed controller and just one of them cheap Chinese $30, 100 amp speed controllers, you're good to go. But I'm going to try it without spending no extra money. I did it on 245 and it flew for a long time. Okay, now someone asked, don't resin seep underneath these. Okay, when I double face these, tape these down, I go all the way around the edge, right up to the edge. And if it's where a point where it's got a lot of turns and stuff, I'll put it past the edge and take my X-Acto and come in and trim it out. And then we run one down the center. Now when I put my primer up there, it'll pretty much seal all that off. But if it'll, a little does seep under there, it ain't no big deal because it'll be such a thin amount. And our mold is waxed underneath there for when I made them parts. And uh, worst case scenario, that part comes out. That will lift up and stay on the wing, but then it'll just pull right out, redouble face tape it on. Uh, no big deal. You know, I found double face tape on a wax surface, you're good to go. I'd wax it first, that way you're safe. If something does, if some resin oozes under there, you're still good to go. You know, no big deal as long as you got it waxed. But my part, my peel, my uh, part all came out awesome. It looks good. Now, let's see where can I put you guys. I'm getting ready to start spraying. I'm going to have to open the dough. Put the respirator on. <laughs> but yeah, Paul really just wanted to come down and play with my foamy. <laughs> Y'all know that's true. <laughs>
never cut a bevel gear. I like the shot. What I did, yeah, is do. I'm trying to figure out a way to. <laughs> uh, I've read that magazines on how to do it. I just never have done it. Well, you got to get your diameter right. Right. And uh, you got to set the thing up on an angle to where the cutter uh -huh. is cutting right here. And and and, the, and it's whatever angle the face of that bevel is, you got to get it tilted to where the cutter is cutting straight down, right? Well, what I did was just use an eighth inch uh, mill and set my uh, set your angle. Gear, uh, set my angle with my gear. Right. And then I drilled a hole and uh, set a hole, and I would just pin pin that right. as I turned to it. To index it. Uh-huh. Right. And, uh, cool. But I've got that indexer now, and uh, it would be a lot easier right. to do with the indexer because you've got right. your degrees on there. Right. I, got, I, got a, I never did get an indexer. I got a dividing head, which is the same thing. Mm -hmm. so. But, uh, I, I, I like doing that kind of stuff, you know. It's like, it's like a little right. jack screw. I want to get the jack screw, but there's some electrical questions I'm not too sure about. Like figuring the gear ratios and all that. I need to play with it, I guess. The biggest headache is uh, getting your diameter right, right. and uh, your amount of teeth right. Right. And then you got to get... Different, I was on spur gears, the cutter, depending on the number of teeth, there's a whole series of cutters depending on the number of teeth, right? And um, I guess there's a way around that, but I don't, I've never tried it. I need to try it. With practice, it, it, it's, it's not too bad after you once learn how to do it. Right. The only gear I cut was on that radial engine I was working on that on the crankshaft, there's a gear that's part of the shaft. And I was able to cut that and it worked out pretty good. But it's, it's all in the setup, you know? The actual cutting is easy. You just gotta get the setup right. Hey, we're still recording. Hey, welcome down to the shop. <laughs> oh, you taking pictures? <laughs> I'll be on that. Well, you're videoing all this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah y'all busted. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that was that problem with my gun. Let's go fly that for me again. <laughs> you get us in trouble, man. It's a secret. <laughs> we don't live. We don't live, 